is the National Senator, Matt Canavan. Senator, good to see you this morning. A few topics to, um, to talk about today. I would start there, though, just on that. What do you make of, or does it even surprise you, that so many Australians are becoming less religious? Oh, no, not at all, Peter. I mean, that's been a trend for, for many decades, and uh, uh, this census was always probably going to show less than half of... Uh, uh, Australians uh, practice Christianity, uh, uh, it shows a massive change in Australia and around the world and uh, there's lots of knock-on effects about that, of course. Well, just on that topic, um, I just noticed these comments from the Catholic Archbishop of, of Sydney, Anthony Fisher. Uh, he said in the paper this morning, and this is all relation to um, the overturning of Roe v. Va Ro v. Wade over in the United States, mm. he believes that... The, the, the church should stand up for the church's teachings, and that includes on the topic of abortion. What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on his intervention overnight? Well, look, I think it's always important that faith-based leaders contribute to our public policy debate. Uh, Christianity in particular has played a huge role in our history and past in opposing conscription in Australia or overseas, helping civil rights causes in the US and even ending slavery right around the world. Uh, it's a very important contributor to our debate. But I actually think what's happened in the US has got more to do with science than religion. As you said, uh, uh, religious observance is declining both here and in the United States. But the science has evolved massively over the last 30 or 40 years where we now have these 3D ultrasounds and much more evidence of what happens to a baby in the womb. And, and past about 20 weeks, the scientific consensus is babies can feel pain. Uh, we can see and observe in late-term abortions that uh, babies seek to avoid the instruments of the procedure. I mean, I think that has changed a lot of views on especially late-term abortions. And something we should consider out of this decision is Australia now is very isolated in the world. We're one of only seven or six other countries now, sorry, uh, which allow late-term abortions in most of our jurisdictions here in Australia. And I think that's a barbaric act that should be outlawed. Well, I mean, I'd probably make the point that this is a deeply personal issue for women who, who have to go through this and, and we're a couple of blokes here talking about it. How common would that be, a late-term abortion? I wouldn't have thought that there would be that many. Well, a, a few years ago in the Queensland Parliament, the government revealed that over 200 babies were actually born alive during a late-term procedure in one year. Um, and, and, and so, of course, late-term abortions are not the more common form of abortion, but they do happen. And, and, and our laws should surely reflect what we think is right or wrong, not what is rare or common. Uh, and I think it is wrong, given the evidence we now have about the development of babies, uh, for late-term abortions to occur, except in the most rarest and exceptional cases. That's not what our laws uh, now maintain. That's only changed in Australia in the last few years, and I don't think this issue of late-term abortions had enough, enough conversation when those laws were changed, when abortion was decriminalised in most jurisdictions over the past few years in Australia. And as I say, we're very isolated now. It's China, North Korea, Vietnam, Canada, the Netherlands uh, and ourselves that, uh, that maintain this uh, permission for late-term abortions. Most European countries, South American countries, most Asian countries do not permit this. I, I just want to bring up... Uh, we'll move on now, Matt, because I'm seeing these pictures coming into us from Sydney right now. It does appear that the blockade Australia protesters are on the move again. We haven't seen the attempted destruction of, of property that we saw yesterday. Not that there was much destruction per se, but, but what are your thoughts on what, what the, the blockade Australia protesters are doing and ultimately trying to achieve here? Well, Peter, this just shows the folly of negotiating with eco-terrorists. I mean, these people cannot, be, will never be happy. And I was told last year we'd sign up to net zero and everybody would be peace and harmony that rain through the land. Uh, we could get on with our lives. But uh, the, you give these type of uh, eco-terrorists an inch and they'll take a mile. Uh, so we sign up to net zero and now they want to end coal next year. Uh, they have no idea about how the world works. They do, are not interested in, uh, in uh, engaging in proper democratic debate. They just want to threaten and bully people into submission. Now, at some point, we have to stand up. We have to stand up and say, no, no more. Uh, we're not doing this anymore. We're not playing this game. Uh, people breaking the law, as clearly some are today, should be arrested. They should face the full force of the law and there should be no sympathy for so, them. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a couple of scuffles now. Police trying to push these, um, these protesters off the road. So it looks like it's starting to wind up again. 
There are these pretty steep fines in place at the moment for illegal protests in New South Wales. You know, people, if convicted, they'll be looking at 20-odd grand, as well as a couple of years in jail. I mean, do you think it should stop there or, 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 or perhaps be even tougher than that? Well, I would give credit to New South Wales. They're one of the few jurisdictions that has... Uh, sought to take the full force of the law through here and there have been cases of people being imprisoned for repeated uh, protest activity. That's what needs to happen clearly. Uh, other jurisdictions have threatened to do that like here in Queensland but the Palaszczuk government hasn't really followed through. Uh, but we've got to clamp down on this and as I say as a society uh, we've got to stop negotiating with these kinds of people who are unreasonable, violent uh, and pay no attention to our laws. Yeah, and very, very frustrating too for those motorists who are just trying to get to their work this morning. Matt Canavan, thank you. We'll talk to you.